So if you've been in the Catholic world and you know Catholic lingo, there's been something that has been told to me since the beginning of time. Well, at least my life. Just surrender to God. Just give it all to him. What does that mean? Like My name is Mari Pablo and this is Ascension Presents. So we see this and we hear this all the time. So on one side, we have this like, just give it all to Jesus mindset. And then on the other side, we have this other mindset. Have it all together. Oh, you're three? What do you wanna be when you grow up? I'm three. A three-year-old shouldn't have to be worrying about what they're gonna do when they're older, okay? Like, where's the balance between the two? Do I give it all to Jesus? Or do I have my five-year plan, my 10-year plan, figure out when I'm gonna get married, have kids and do everything right now? This has been something of surrendering to the Lord. <sighs> for being honest, has always been an issue for me. A struggle. Let's say, let's say a struggle for me. So I grew up Catholic, but I had a reversion um, in college when I was serving at a summer missionary at a Catholic camp. I wasn't fully there. Like I was not, Jesus did not have my whole heart. He had only parts. You know that part of the Bible that it was like, Luke, if you're lukewarm, we'll spit you out. I was the lukewarm person just waiting to be spewed out. Thankfully, Things change there. After going to confession, having an argument with the priest, long story, another day, I remember being in adoration and in front of the Eucharist, it was like this activity that you had to go up and kneel in front of the Lord and say, God, like I give you everything. Everyone would go and they were all, a lot of people were crying around me. I went up to Jesus and I looked at him and I looked at the Lord in the Eucharist. And even though I had my doubts, I always knew that was him. And instead of saying like, good luck, God, like take all of everything. I started making a list of all the reasons why I didn't have to give him everything. Like, Lord, me and you are good. I love you, you love me. We're a great big family. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not killing anyone. I'm not doing drugs. Like, we're, we're good. And the priest behind me looked at me and he said the words that forever changed my life. And he said, stop fighting and surrender. And those are the words that forever changed my life. Um, and then I became the person crying. And I mean, changed my whole life around, like literally. My career, my school, broke up with my boyfriend, changed my friends, everything. And I wish I could say that it was like, and then everything was great. No. You know how we are talking about the power of words? That saying, stop fighting and surrender, is constantly in my mind. I constantly have to tell myself these words over and over and over again on a daily basis because I want to be in control. I want to figure things out. I have my plan. I want to know what's going on. And I'm not super organized. She should check my room out. <laughs> but I want to know what's happening. And God really put this to the test, especially this past year. Like all of us, um, I really wanted to travel. And I had my dream trip planned. The Holy Land, okay? Like Jesus is from there. To walk where Jesus walked, that's amazing. But for me, it was double special. So for those of you who do not know, I'm Dominican from the Dominican Republic, but I'm also Arabic. And my grandfather was raised in Bethlehem, you know, where Jesus was born. So for me, it was gonna be the super epic trip. Jesus and my family, like going to the land of both. And then I was over there, so I was gonna, you know, go to Egypt, see the pyramids, go to Greece, go to Dubai, why not? Go to Russia, and then, you know, on the way home, stop in Fatima, to see Our Lady. And it was gonna be this epic trip, and I was so excited. Then the whole world just put on pause, and everything was cut. And instead of all the travels and all the conferences and all the things I had planned, I found myself in my room, sitting, doing nothing, which was horrible and also great. In the stillness and in the stopping, I was reminded of something, a very important lesson that I oftentimes forget and need to remember. And that is that I control nothing. And it's funny because I always say that prayer. I literally, before filming this, I said, God, I am nothing and you are everything. And I repeat it so many times and I say it out loud because I need to be constantly reminding myself that I am nothing and you are everything, Lord. And I need to give you control. And so, yes, I'm gonna make plans. But at the end of the day, if it's not a part of what you want, God, I don't want it. So why is this so difficult? Um, one, pride. <laughs> because I wanna figure things out on my own. Um, two, detachment is really hard. To be able to like say, Lord, no, like it's okay. It's okay if I don't, things don't go the way I want. Even saying that tastes a little bit like vinegar in my mouth, not in a good way. But it's great to be able to recognize, okay, this is something that I wanna work on and I need to be able to give this to you. 
Um, something that I love about people, the religious life, that they take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And the obedience one has always been someone that I'm like, oh, that sounds so rough. But the way they describe it, it's like, yes, but you're making the choice to willingly give control to God. And in that surrender, there's freedom. And that's exactly what I'm striving for. Notice how I said striving because I'm still a work in progress to be able to say, God, here's my heart. Do with it as you will. And in that decision, daily decision, and we'll explain that in a second, that we, we can also encounter freedom. So when there are moments that things go haywire, because there are moments, I actually learned that about myself recently. Um, the smallest little things go wrong and I've kind of lost it. My student wore, like, forgot his t-shirt for a retreat. And in my mind, I was like, it's over. Like, the retreat, I read, the retreat's just done. Like, how is this retreat going to function because you forgot your shirt? And it sounds silly, but in the moment, I I feel like it's 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 my retreat. Like, I, I, I have to plan it and it has to be done in a certain, certain way. And if something goes off, it's just kaput. A t-shirt's not going to ruin God's plans. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. But I have to talk myself out of that. And that's a problem. And so something that I, I've actually found extremely helpful um, is Ruah. As you can see, I look Greek words. And so Ruah means breath. And it's the breath of the Holy Spirit. And one of my favorite prayers is very simple. And it's just three words. And it's, come Holy Spirit. And so I'll take a minute. And when I'm super stressed and filled with anxiety and freaking out, and it's like, Lord, how can I give you everything? Like, And I feel like the entire weight of the world is on me. Even though it says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, like, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Like, it's so hard because I feel like I have to be the one carrying it. I take a minute and I just take a breath. And when I breathe in, I say, come Holy Spirit. And so I'll just, I'll just breathe in. And when I breathe out, all of my stress, all of my anxieties, my worries, I literally picture myself giving them to the Lord. And I have found that so helpful and such a beautiful reminder that God will meet me there and he will meet you there if you simply invite him in. Practical ways to do this. The more you have a relationship with God, the better you will trust him and the more you will want to like give him control. It's kind of like in any relationship of a marriage or relationship of a family, um, trust builds upon relationship. And if you don't have a relationship, you're not gonna trust him with anything. And so the more that you pray and the more you build that bond, the more you can say, okay, God, like I know that you're God and you're not going to let me down. And so I, I choose to willingly, willingly, God's a gentleman. He doesn't barge in to willingly give you control. Something that I've done, um, and I actually started doing it again recently in preparation for this video. Um, it's every single day. The first thing I do is I kneel down and I say, okay, God, I give you my day. Everything that I do and say may it be for your glory. May every action, every encounter that I do, may I be an instrument so that you may be working through me and in me. And that, that small little step every morning makes the world of a difference in so many powerful ways. The last thing that I want to mention, um, I've noticed throughout the years that it's important to recognize what gifts you have. And so if you don't know this, I invite you to take time to figure, to pray with that. Uh, one of the gifts that I've been given, and I know for sure it's a gift, is the gift of joy. And trust me, it definitely comes from the Lord. And was something in that, I think sometimes people can mistake in my joyfulness um, for like childishness. We're called to have childlike faith. I mean, Jesus literally says to be like the children. And what does that mean? A child just trusts that God's gonna, their father's gonna supply. My nephew is not freaking out about what they're gonna feed him. He knows we're gonna feed him. We're gonna feed him well, that's right. He just knows that he's gonna be taken care of. And so in this, the more that I can be like a child, and the more that I can have a childlike faith and say, God, like, I'm going to do my part. But at the end of the day, you're my father and you're going to supply my needs and you're going to give me all the things that I need because you're a good and faithful father who loves his children and you're not going to let me down. And in that childlike faith and trusting that God is God and that we're the children and that we're not God, so we shouldn't have it all figured out. There's a beautiful deep surrender. So prepare, take out your resumes, do what you got to do. But at the end of the day, know that he's the one that needs to be in control. What is it in your life that you need to give God control over? Is it obviously, I think all of us need our hearts, right? But are there certain relationships that we're clinging to that we don't want to surrender? Is it our future that we're freaking out about? Is it where we're going to study? Is it certain sins or attachments that we just 
don't want to relinquish? What is it that you need to surrender? What's holding you back from giving God your all? And maybe that's fear. What the Lord is saying right now, like, do not be afraid. For he is with you. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, just ask that you may send your Holy Spirit upon us right now. All that I am and all that I have, I give you glory. And we ask, Lord, that at this very moment that you may come upon us and bring to light what it is that we need to surrender to you. And we're going to say this through the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it as you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So every single day, wake up and give it to him. And that's all we gotta do. It's that simple or not complicated. You get what I'm saying. Try it. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye.